Bonjour. Bonjour à tous et à toutes. Bienvenue pour cette nouvelle session des Artist Talks by the Eyes, euh, pour cette avant-dernière journée de la programmation à Paris Photo cette année. J'ai l'honneur d'accueillir aujourd'hui pour une session en français et en anglais, ou plus précisément en anglais et en français, quatre euh, jeunes pousses, quatre euh, four merging talents, que, euh, qui ont été identifiés dans le cadre du programme Carte Blanche étudiant, qui a été créé il y a six ans entre Paris Photo, Picto Foundation, qui est le fonds de dotation des laboratoires Picto, et SNCF, Gare et Connexion. Donc ce programme vise à identifier parmi une soixantaine d'écoles de photographie et d'art visuel en Europe euh, de, de jeunes talents issus de ces écoles à qui l'on propose de venir euh, participer à, à Paris Photo où ils rencontrent euh, en présentant leur portfolio un certain nombre d'experts de, de, du monde de l'image et où ils bénéficient d'une installation euh, dans une gare parisienne, en l'occurrence la gare de Lyon où vous pouvez trouver, euh, rencontrer leur, leur travail. Uh, so just to make a very quick introduction in English, uh, I am very honored. I don't have any mic. No, it's okay. It works again. Uh, to welcome today uh, the four uh, winners of the uh, 2022 uh, Carte Blanche Student Program. Uh, so it's a selection of uh, merging talents from uh, more than 60 European photography and uh, visual art school in Europe. And so we invite them, uh, after uh, being uh, selected by the international jury, we invite them to uh, participate to the fair, where they can present their portfolio to a large part of, uh, of, of experts, and uh, uh, also to uh, an exhibition uh, in a Paris station. So when you go to Gare de Lyon, you can see a huge exhibition with their, with their work. Uh, so it's very interesting this program because you uh, you can uh, uh, see what kind of uh, merging talent is revealing today, uh, today in uh, this year. Uh, what 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 are the trends in photography? So, donc ce programme est vraiment intéressant parce qu'il permet de, de voir petit à petit les, les talents qui sont en train de se réveiller à l'avenir. Je vais commencer par uh, so ladies first, comme on dit. Uh, honor aux, aux, aux dames. I will uh, start with uh, um, a first guest who is Alessandra Letta. So please, Alessandra, can you join me? <laughs> Alessandra, so I, I will, uh, will speak in English, but I will do a, a little introduction in, uh, in French. Alessandra Letta est une étudiante qui nous vient, enfin qui est italienne, mais qui nous vient de pas très loin de l'Italie, de l'université de Bâle en Suisse. Euh, et euh, Alessandra a, euh, développe un, un travail, euh, on va dire, post-documentaire, ou à la fois documentaire avec une, une dimension euh, partiellement conceptuelle, puisqu'elle revisite un certain nombre d'images euh, du passé pour nous faire mieux, mieux comprendre le présent. So Alessandra Letta is uh, an Italian photographer, an Italian artist, uh, coming from uh, University of Basel in Switzerland. And your work is, uh, I would say, maybe a, a post-documentary uh, uh, approach where you, 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 you are uh, mixing uh, documentary photography uh, with archives and, uh, and a kind of uh, a conceptual approach. So uh, could you tell us about your project, The Unmovable un Mover? that you present here in, uh, in Paris Photo. Yes, um, so first of all, thank you for being here. Um, and yeah, like you said, uh, my work started from, from a series of pictures that I found in various trips uh, to this market in Switzerland. And I was really interested in the story behind uh, this, this body of work that was almost uh, really um, strange to me because I don't know to this day if the images come from the same place or are shot by the same hands. And I was just um, questioning myself how I can really bring these together and almost blur their origin. So um, I was researching a bit on um, trying to find traces of, of these pictures and I didn't have m much information to them. Um, it was only a date that the 
it was written behind the, these photographs. And um, I started imagining almost a visual narrative behind the, the pictures. And I, I put in, uh, I staged some other photographs, uh, like this one that you see, as to refer to the, to the space um, which these people, with which these uh, photographs might belong to. And we are in a factory in the, in the mid 70s. So I really, um, almost like a writer, I started writing a, a, a story and from which the characters you could see in the pictures that I found. And so I worked in two ways. The first uh, way was to directly rework the images that I find that I found um, by by scanning them and, and rephotographing them and the second um, way was to stage uh, new images and to make direct references to to the production behind this imaginary factory and these these spaces these offices so this is how I worked and um, the the one main question for me was also to confuse traces in, in the pictures, not only from, from the ones that I found, but also my, my, own, my own, because I, I imagine one day if, if someone like me finds all this body of work, I like the idea of not being able to understand where they come from and, and, and adding more layers to this narration. So in a way you are trying to rethink the past in the present. What, what would it mean for you? Um, well, for me, I think I, I asked many questions about um, the, the photograph as a document and w how much time should pass before a photograph is considered document and also the, this quality, that um, this tangibility in, in found photographs, which is, we can say, like a a whole genre of of, of, of photo of photo photography. So, I I I'm always attracted to to this ambiguity and this not knowing uh, where they come from and the the history behind them. But at the same time, I think it's a uh, it's a whole treasure um, that we can find, and it's really important to me always to bring the the work into the present and. Because I think, of course, the, the the past says a lot about our 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 history, and it's really important to me to make uh, continuous links between between past and present. And I in a way, everyone can uh, tell his own story through your images. You know, we can imagine everything. So you don't you don't write the old story when you make your photographs. So you, you, you wait that people are themselves thinking to, to write their stories through, through your images? Yeah, I, I also like this, uh, this aspect of my work. And it's the reason why my, my series is not really, doesn't have an order. Because I imagine that people would go through it uh, almost like a, really like a, a narrative, like a book. And so you, you always had your own opinions and your own gaze to, to what you're seeing. And so the order is not important. And that's also why I remove uh, people from the photographs that I find, because in a way to as to universalize uh, that same situation, that same framework. And this is uh, something that I, I'm, I'm working through. Uh, and it's uh, really, I wanted it to be present in the, in the, in the piece, in the work. But when you found uh, these images, they were already black and white or color photographs? They were already black, black and, and white, white, yes. And uh, technically, can you explain a little bit? Because you said that you are scanning and then rephotographing. So it's not digital work. You, 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 you scan, you print, and you maybe you give up part of, uh, of the image, like the face. How you do that? Uh, so, I mean, the, the work is digital because the, the pictures are digital, but um, I work I work in an analog, analog way in, in the sense that you just described. Um, I, always, I always start with, with uh, the, the found photograph and based on, on the setting, 
um, I proceed in different ways. For, so for example, some of them I uh, are just rephotographed, um, blurred, so the out of focus is, is not pointed on directly on the image. Um, other, other I, I really am almost in size on, so I cut the paper and then rephotograph um, the work and others I, I yes scan and and then glitch through like moving the image around in the scanner or or putting a, a really bright light on and, and also always um, also playing with the materiality of, of the print and the the, f the glares uh, so that's how I'm achieving that look and with this kind of project what is your objective you want you, you spoke about the book or an exhibition, or you see your image, or you see your project at the end? So I'm, I'm currently uh, thinking about turning this project into a book, so I'm, I'm looking for writers and, and, and editors and publishers, um, because I would, I would uh, really see this work as a, as a little book um, with a real narration, with a, with a text ad added to the story. So that's, yeah, what I mean. uh, Actually, I forgot to say that uh, the four photographers from Carte Blanche Students Program has a booth just beside uh, this place where you can, after the talk, go and see them and discover their portfolios. So uh, again, I mean, the objective of this program is to allow you and them to meet together and to speak about the world. Last, last question, who, who would be your inspirations? Um, so my, I think my biggest one in general um, is Christian Patterson, which uh, who is a, I mean, a, an amazing artist, also working uh, with with crime stories and and finding a link between found objects and and found photographs and kind of blurring the lines between between traces and and proof, which is something that really inspires me and. I think his work is really, really helpful to as an inspiration. Okay, and this is your first main uh, theory. Yes, yes, yeah. it is. Okay, so bravo, merci beaucoup, grazie mille. Thank you, thank you, um, everyone. <laughs> and you can you can have a seat, but I think my daughter took your chair. <laughs>